Uh, tonight we are in the book of Jude. If you happen to not know me, my name is Joel. I'm one of the elders here at the bridge. Um, and we will be going through the entire book of Jude tonight. All 25 verses. So, I'm going to read through, then we'll pray, and then we'll kind of get, walk ourselves through uh, verse by verse. We, uh, I do want to encourage you, Mike can, Mike can attest to this, if you have a chance to go to the, to, to do any service with the prison, prison ministry, it's, it is a, we had the, um, the Christmas event there, we go there and do a big worship service snacks for the, for the guys and stuff. It's, you leave there way more blessed than you think you did anybody, anybody, anybody else. And so it's, uh, it's a good time to kind of to, to level set and sort of remember that you know, these guys are just guys. You know, they're, they're, you talk to these guys and literally they're, they're just guys. They, they made a stupid mistake and you know, many of them you know, like as PD said there, they didn't do much worse than some of us have, have done and just got away with. So, you know, it's a good level set and, and you know, humbling and I think it's a real blessing to the guys. So if you ever have a chance uh, to get out there, it's worth absolutely worth going. And it's, it's huge for those guys. I love it. All right. Jude, not chapter one, just Jude. Jude, verse one. Jude, a bond servant of Jesus Christ the bro and the brother of James, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ, mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the, for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in similar manner to these, having given themselves, giving themselves over to sexual, sexual immorality and God after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts, in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to you, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of ba Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. These are spots in your love feasts, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars, for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Now Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied about these men, also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict 
all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts, and they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the spirit. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I, I ask you, Lord, to lead us as we dig into your word tonight. Uh, Lord, I do ask that you would Lord, help me to not get in your way, Lord, that, that the, anything I have that's prepared that's not of you, that it, it would just be skipped or, or dropped and not heard. And God, that what's, you, what's of you and what glorifies your son Jesus, Lord, would be heard. And God, that you would build us up. You would use this, God, to keep us in your love. Let me thank you for your word. Thank you for this book. In Jesus' name, amen. Jude was a half-brother of Jesus and the brother of James. Uh, and he, uh, the, the, the James who authored the book, James. Verse 1, Jude a bondservant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. To those who are called, as was written to, to those who are called sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. This was written to believers. Those who are called, set aside for the purpose of God's use. Mercy, peace, and love be multiplied to you. And it's interesting, you know, Paul tends to, tends to grace and, you know, uh, grace and peace. Grace and peace it tends to be how Paul starts it. So this is a, you know, a different, you know, using a different terminology. And I think, you know, the interesting, you know, that we, we know the difference between grace and mercy, right? Great grace is, is receiving something good that you didn't deserve. Mercy being not receiving punishment or discipline that you did deserve, right? So there's a dichotomy there. And I, and I wonder, and this is, this admittedly is conjecture, but this is kind of the, the impression I got when I was when I was thinking of, about that is that here's Jude, the brother of Jesus, grew up with him, his older brother never saw him sin, saw him walk in wisdom beyond his age, saw him loving those around him, and did not believe and, and, and so I wonder if the mercy part is what Jude walks around recognizing that me of all people was I was put in our Savior's family. The physical family. I grew up with him and I didn't I rejected him. And he had mercy on me. And so that kind of makes me wonder if that's why, you know, he he's, he doesn't start off with grace. He, he obviously he got it, but he starts off with the, the mercy of he really gets, man, you are so merciful, God. We multiply to you. Mercy, peace, and love, we multiply to you. He doesn't want just a little bit. Not to add it up. He wants here. Heap up God's mercy. Heap up God's peace. 
keep up his love. Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write you exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. For certain men have crept in unnoticed who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And so this idea of I was very diligent from what, I, what I've read, the, the Greek in there really means is he, I was planning on writing about this. Our common salvation. And he's not talking about common as in everybody's got it. He's not common in we have this in common. We are a community. That, that's what he means by common. He was planning and just kind of writing as, as a brother. You know, talking about what the Lord's doing. But, but then he was compelled. I found it necessary to exhort you because he must have heard that, that their body, that who he was writing to, there had been a an infiltration of these false prophets who came sneaking in. Uh, certain men who have crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked out for this condemnation. And I, there's an interesting crept in unnoticed, but were marked out. The crept in unnoticed was to us. And that's, that's a Jude warning us, Jude warning the believers back at that time, that there's people that are creeping in unnoticed by us. But God's God knows that one is, has been marked out for condemnation because of what He's going to do. He's, he's not like, oh, what am I going to do about these people? It's, he's, got it, he's got it sorted. And it's now this book is an instruction book for us of how to deal with it, how to live in that. With those who are People are creeping into the church, making the church look bad, doing things that the church shouldn't be doing, saying things the church shouldn't be saying. Uh, and so, God's got it under control. They're, they've been marked out for this condemnation. And this is one of those verses that, uh, you know, there's, there's this false dichotomy out there, the Armenianism versus Calvinists, the free will versus the sovereignty of God. This is one of those verses that, what do you mean? This, these people were marked out a long time ago for condemnation. That, that, that sure, you know, the, the, the sovereignty of God, you know, Calvinists, see, that proves it. And the Armenians, this is tough for the, the free will guys. But, but I, I guess the point I wanted to, to, to pull out here is, that question, the sovereignty of God and the free will of man, is a false dichotomy born out of our ignorance, not out of not out of a problem in, in the Bible, is that yes, the Bible says in many places God knew these things before beforehand. And yes, God, the Bible says in many places that our choices matter, what we do matter, and we'll be held accountable for them. Um, but the problem is there there is not is the Bible in conflict, but is our ignorance of, of the full nature and power of God. And so be careful getting caught up in these kind of false dichotomies. The enemy loves to put, put us in this situation. Well are you are you right or are you left? Are you conservative or are you this? Are you Calvinist or Armenian? Are you this? And that's that's usually false. We should, you know the truth isn't one or the other. The truth is is usually some, something else. And, and in this case, we can't fully understand the truth. Because in our, in our, you know, the distance there is between us and, and our Creator, we can't understand how they can both be true. Both we have free will and God is sovereign over all. He can, he's, uh, and so, but it's, it's not... Not something that we need to get hung up on forever. So the next point I want to bring out here is in verse 4, who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny 
the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. We tend to have this modern image of this effeminate, kind of weak wristed Jesus who was afraid to who was afraid to say the truth, who was afraid to speak harshly to people. And that's just not if you look in scripture, Jesus who loved, who gave his life that all might be saved, was very harsh sometimes with his words. He was he didn't mix words. He was very clear when people were deceiving. He was very clear when people were gladly walking in sin. He was very gentle with, a, with broken people. But with those who were full of pride and deceiving others, he was, he was not gentle. And so, uh, we sometimes, I think it's a, a useful rule of thumb <laughs> that, if, that if we're finding ourselves like in a, we're more graceful than Jesus, we're probably cowards, not graceful. We're, we're probably grace, gracious. Sorry, graceful is like, whoa! All right, makes those two up. Gracious, gracious um, is that if we we are finding ourselves on the on the tendency of being more gracious than Jesus was, then we are probably actually coward cowards, unwilling to say what needs to be said versus uh, actually being full of grace. So, uh, in that, I just I would just say we need to be careful that we do not use grace as a cloak for cowardice. I know I, I certainly have before. Um, verse 5. But I want to remind you, though you once were a Jew, by the way. Bruce, sorry. But I want to remind you, though you once knew this, that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroy those who did not believe. We need reminders. He's, say, he's saying, you, you do this, you know this, I'm not telling you something, but just I want to bring out, we, need, we as believers need reminders of what God has already told us, what God has already done, and done, what God did historically in Scripture. That's why He left us the Word. We need these reminders. And though... Egypt, or excuse me, Israel was saved out of Egypt. They chose not to believe. And most of them never made it to the promised land. So they lived in blessing to a point. They were saved from the world, but they were not saved into the promised land. They, they you know, saw many things that many of us don't see. The, the Lord providing manna on a daily basis. Providing uh, birds for them to eat on a daily basis, shoes never wearing out, things that are miraculous, and, like, and yet they chose not to believe when it came time for them to go into the promised land. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain but left their own abode, he has reserved in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day, as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities that around them, in similar manner to these, having given themselves over to sexual immorality and, gone, immorality and gone after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. So, most likely this Angels did not keep their proper domain. Is talking about the, the what happened in Genesis six two, where you know the sons of God went under the saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and came, went under them. And so most likely that's what this is talking about. We don't have necessarily direct this is for sure, but that's probably what's being discussed. Obviously, the second part of this is discussing homosexuality with with Sodom and Gomorrah and. Uh, this whole section here is talking about things being joined sexually that God never intended for them to be joined. Men with men, women with women, angels with humans. This was not ever meant what, what God meant to happen. Verse 8, Likewise, also these dreamers, going back again to those who snuck in, likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, 
and speak evil of dignitaries. The, re the rejection of the authority structure God had put in place uh, and speaking of evil. Now, I'm sure I'm not the only one who found myself in this sin. This is, the enemy plays this chord with us. That, that we start to, you know, there's the old saying of um, what's for dinner Sunday evening is roast, roast pasta, right? Is, is we like to, we like to complain against the leadership. It's a, you know, it's easy to do, whether it's in business, whether it's in church, whether it's, you know, we're, we're all beyond it being in home with our, with our parents, but home with our parents either way. So, you know, this, this is, but God doesn't see this as any small thing. God is very serious about us submitting to the authorities in our, in our lives. God is very serious about, about us submitting. And so if you're walking in sin in this area, repent. If you're, if you're finding yourself talking badly about your boss, badly about you know your company, badly about the church, badly about Pastor David or one of the other elders, other pastors repent. It is, it is. It's not good for you. It's, I'm not saying that whoever you're speaking ill about may well. You may be speaking the truth. It may be completely 100% true what you're saying, but that doesn't mean you should be saying. It. That doesn't mean you should allow that 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 sin to continue to affect your heart. Continue to affect. Uh, stop what the Lord is doing in you. So be careful of that. That's going. As I said, this is this is a sin that I've that I've walked in, so I'm not you me, me, I'm just saying be careful. Repent when you find yourself there. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. This is what what ill could be said of the devil? And the archangel, walking in accordance with God's will, recognizing that God gave the devil dominion and authority over the earth, did not say a reviling word against the devil. <laughs> no matter how bad your boss is, how bad anything, he's not saved. Right? He may be close. She may be close. But, and he didn't. He, the archangels, the Lord rebuked you. The Lord rebuked you. He didn't speak it. Even a negative word towards Satan. Because Satan was the authority here. By God's will, he, he not was, is the authority here. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know. Again, going back again to the uh, the men who crept in. Certain certain men crept in long ago. Going back to them. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts. In these things, they corrupt themselves. So these are these are people, these are men living by their just base animal instincts. You know, whether it's um, you know, just just those base desires, not caring about anything else. I want this. I want power. I want sex. I want money. I want label. I want that comes up in that just very base survival. I mean, survival can be thought of. You know. We as as you know the big, well I said the animal kingdom their 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 strongest desire is just survival. Well, we have that too. We have this desire for survival. So, but if we're living just based on that desire for survival, we're living on a base, brute, brutish animal instinct rather than submitting to God as Lord. Recognize we're, we're built in His image, not to, not to live like animals, uh, but to but to think and to create and to and to submit and to trust Him. And but they were uh, right. 
they were just reviling against anything that they didn't understand, any spiritual. So these are people walking according to the flesh. They didn't understand love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, the fruits of the Spirit. They, they, they didn't walk according. They, didn't, they were reviled against them. So this is not saying we're looking for people who are saying, oh, joy is horrible. You don't want joy. You don't want to have peace. That's not what they're saying. But the work they're doing, what they do in our midst, takes away joy, takes away peace, takes away kindness, takes away goodness, destroys unity. Right? These, these works of the Spirit, these, this fruit of the Spirit, those who have crept in among us, that's what they're tearing down, what they don't understand. They're tearing down uh, the, the, the things that God is doing in among us. And we need to be, again, aware as believers to those around us, but also aware internally, what am I doing? It might be, first of all, we should always examine ourselves. Am I this guy? Am I somebody who's crept among us and acting like a Christian? But I'm cutting cutting other people and I'm hurting other people and I'm tearing down joy and I'm, and I'm uh, causing disunity and I'm, and I'm railing against leadership and I, I don't know where you are so I, I just examine yourself are you that if you are that repent repent as I I didn't mention I meant to mention it is in my notes is Talking about this marked out for condemnation. Yeah, that that's God's sovereignty over what he knew was going to happen in the future. But there's no I, I know for sure any of these people that might be described here, if they turn and repent, if they believe unto the Lord Jesus Christ, they can be saved. And that con condemnation is gone. For all of sin and fall short, right? So we're all marked out for condemnation until Jesus did that work and we, and we believe unto Him. Confess with our mouth. So if any of you find, find yourself in, the, in that, wow, man, I keep lining up with what's, what He's talking about, these people who snuck in the church. Examine yourself. I'm not saying that from a condemnation standpoint. We all, these are, these are sins that we struggle with, as I've said. There are several, many, many of these that I struggle with. Um, so it's not, but but this is, so this is for us to look around and to be conscious of are there people among us that are doing that in our, in our church that are hurting other people, that are hurting me, that I should hang around, that, that I may need to talk to, but also it's for us to examine our hearts. Okay. Verse 11, Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the air of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Cain, what was the way of Cain? He walked in envy, persecuted the godly, and was violent. Right? Balaam, for money, he gave counsel to lead God's people out of the blessings of God. Remember, he was a prophet that um, Balak, I think Balak offered. I'm not sure. So, but anyway, an enemy of Israel came to him, offered him a big sum of money to curse Israel. Uh, he said, I don't want to do that. Then he came back with an even bigger delegation with a bigger offer, curse Israel. And finally he said, okay, I'll do that. So then he went to curse Israel, but instead he blessed them. God wouldn't allow him to bless them. But what he said to the enemies of Israel is he said, you know how you can get God to bless, God to curse them? Tempt them to fall into idolatry and fornication. And then God will curse them. And so, Balaam for money 
stumbled the children of Israel to get them out of God's blessing. For greed, so that's what I was talking about. People for greed who stumble the children of God. And perished in the rebellion of Korah. Korah, if you recall, was the one who stirred up the rebellion early in the after leaving Egypt against Moses. And he stirred up a rebellion against God's chosen authority. And God destroyed him. Verse 12. These are spots in your love feasts while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by the winds, late autumn trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of sea, foaming up in their own shame, wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. This whole section is talking about blustering, Marketing and, and a lot of pomp and circumstance, but no substance. This idea of clouds without water. I mean, clouds are supposed to bring rain. They're talking about a desert region here. When you see a cloud, you're hoping for rain. A cloud without water is like, a cloud without rain, so what's the point of that? That, that just gets blown about. It goes from here, it goes from there, it does maybe never ever does anything useful, just goes from this ministry, that ministry, talks to this person, talks to that person. Just get gets blown about rather than digging in, actually serving the Lord, serving other people in some way. Laid out on trees without fruit. What are, what's supposed to be on laid out on trees? Fruit. These are trees that absorb nutrients that take, 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 but never give back. They're, they're of no value to anybody else but themselves. Raging waves of, of the sea foaming up on their own chain. I'm not sure you've all been to the beach where the waves are crashing in. But if, there, if, if you notice where there's waves that are really foaming, there's no power to it. It's just foam. It's, there's no, it's, if it was a solid wave, there's power to it. But it, there's all that foam, it's just like... Eh. And so let's talk about this. Oh, that's a big wave. It's just a bunch of foam. It's just nothing, nothing to it. Now Enoch, verse 14, the seventh from Adam prophesied about these men also saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment on all, to convict all who are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in an ungodly way, and of all the harsh things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So Enoch, one of the two who never died, the Bible says he, Enoch walked with God and he was not, for God took him. And this prophecy that's being spoken of here is actually from the book of Enoch, which is not a, not a biblical book. Um, it's, and that doesn't necessarily mean that because he's quoting from that, he's saying, you know, Book of Enoch should be considered scripture. But that quote, that prophecy was obviously inspired and should be considered scripture. So, um, and again, this goes back to the talking about the false prophets who had crept in, for certain men had crept in unnoticed, who long ago were marked. This is Enoch. Long, long ago is what he's talking about. And that's what ties Enoch, the seventh from Adam, was prophesying about these guys being marked for condemnation. Long ago. Verse 16. Again, going back to, to more examples of who these guys are. These are grumblers, complainers, walking according to their own lusts. And they mouth great swelling words, flattering people to gain advantage. More insight into who they are. 
But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord. And saying, remember, but you, beloved, God is saying, remember. You're going to see all this madness around you. And we kind of, we, I'm sure many generations have had this, but it's getting kind of crazy right now in our culture. And it's, it's getting kind of crazy in the, in the church in America and in, in the world. And it's, you know, so we see all this madness around us. And then Jew, Jew says, the Lord says through Jew, but you, talking again to those who are sanctified, but you remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. He's calling us to don't worry about what's going on around you. Don't get unsettled because of that. It's all a bunch of noise and mess and will go nowhere in the end. You remember and obey. That's what He's calling us to do. Remember God's Word and obey. Verse 18, How they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions, not having the Spirit. Your old-fashioned, the religious nut, your Jesus freak, um, you're a bigot, you're a what, whatever else they're, they're, they're saying nowadays, if you're a Christian, they're mocking, they're calling names. And again, he's saying, just remember, remember I said this was going to happen. Just remember what I said and obey. Verse 20. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most high, excuse me, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. But you, beloved, again for the third time, beloved, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. This is not talking about works. This is talking about being where God's blessing is. Being in the love of God is, is God doesn't move, but we tend to. Right? If we, if we fall into some of these sins that are being described here, we move outside of where, where God's love has overflowing blessing. And so we need to repent of those things that we've gotten caught into, whether it's grumbling, complaining, uh, gratifying our flesh, uh, any of these that, that have been, you know, complaining, rebelling against leaders, complaining uh, against leaders, speaking badly about, about those God has put in authority, whether church or outside. If we've fallen into any of those, we're, we are taking our, ourselves outside of God's love. So repent. He says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy. And that's part of it here. How do we keep ourselves there? It's not like we're going to be sinless, but we continue to look for God's mercy to bring us back there. When we, when we fail, when we fall, we look for His mercy to bring us back. We continue to seek Jesus unto eternal life. His love has not moved. We have. Verse 22, And on some have compassion, making a distinction. But others say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So this is this is again acknowledging that 
There will be some that look like these, that walk like these, that may have been marked for condemnation. But if we have, if we're discerning, some we can have compassion on, gently disciple, and they can be saved. Others, they may take a little more forceful discipleship, but they can be saved. The Lord pull them from the fire. So God's not forgetting about them like a, there's still a, an offer of grace to them. But, but we, His beloved, who have built ourselves up in the holy faith, we're keeping ourselves in God's love, God's love, continually looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. It's our job to be discerning towards those around us. Are they falling into this condemnation? And how do I how do I help them? Do I need to be gentle and corrective, or do I need to be harsh? And you better you better get yourself straight, with the Lord. You're in danger of eternal fire. Verse twenty-four. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to your present faultless. Sorry, I can't read. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Think back to that mercy. That is mercy that he can keep us from stumbling, that he can present us faultless. There's not a one in here who is even remotely faultless, probably today. And yet he's going to present us faultless. With exceeding joy. And you can think about that. This is Jesus. Father, look at this. Faultless. For as he presents us, imagine that joy. To God, our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. So I know all of you guys, I believe as far as I know that you are all in the faith. But you know where you are with the Lord. And so um, I encourage you if, if you are not, make sure that you are. Repent. Turn to Him. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for this man. I thank you, God, that you are a merciful and gracious God. Um, that your desire is not to have us marked in condemnation. go through eternal fire, but Lord, that your mercy catches us, uh, catches as many as it can before that. And so I pray, Lord, you would make us tools of that mercy, tools of your grace. Dragging people into heaven. Right, Lord. I pray, God, for your protection over this body, that you would give uh, leadership wisdom, that you give us each each wisdom, God, to, uh, to see those who are causing division, to not take part in it. Lord, that you would give us boldness to speak. Help us, God, to not cloak um, cowardice and grace.